Hey, what's up, everybody? All right, so this time I want to talk about uh, and share with you guys something that I use a lot, and it's uh, just a little trick to uh, preserve a morph target on something that you want to uh, raise up to a higher subdivision. So I'll show you why I made this, um, and then I'm going to show you how to make a macro and then run through how I made this, made this specific macro. So... Uh, the reason I made this macro is uh, I like to work with uh, having a clean morph target stored. So uh, if you don't know what that is, if you come down here to morph target right here on your right, you can hit store morph target and that's going to store the mesh. You And generally, if you're working in uh, subdivision levels, you want to do that at the highest subdivision level. That way, you know, you can... You'll notice here that I have a um, <clears throat> clean morph target underneath this whole dragon that I made a while back. Um, so I can get rid of detail. It, it's just easier than smoothing, especially at higher subdivision levels. So here's where the problem comes in, though. Say I want to change something, okay? And rather than, and I want to have that morph target, but maybe I need more detail. Like if you zoom in right here, it's getting a little pixelated for some of this detail. So maybe I want it to be as crisp as say the head is here on some of these uh, bumps and things. So, <clears throat> well, you can subdivide up, but now you'll see you've lost your morph target. If I try to, you know, get it back, it's not going to do anything. So... The macro that I made runs through this and it subdivides up and uses a trick with layers. It's not really, well, I guess it is a trick, but it just uses uh, the layers to run through and I'll show you. Uh, I've got it right here. It's called subdivide. I call it subdivide preserve MT for morph target. So if I click this, you'll see it's going to run through a few things. Rack up the, uh, and you'll notice that my active points are 800,000 or so. So this is going, uh, like by regular subdivide, it's going to 3.331 mil. That's exactly what it's going to go to, except, you know, it's going to keep so that I can erase with my uh, morph brush. Okay, so I'm going to run the macro right quick, and then I'm going to show you guys how I did it. So I'm going to run through the macro, and it's done. Basically, it created a layer, cranked it, stored a morph target, cranked it back down, and yeah, I'll run through it in a second. But you'll see, now I've got a, a much more dense mesh here that I can detail if I wanted to, uh, or even change, real, like, you know, chain. maybe I want the spine to come out instead of in. So, by the way, these brushes are insane. Shout out to Pablo Munoz uh, Gomez. Uh, I've taken several workshops from the guy. I'm going to link his channel you guys got to check it out. Uh, check out ZBrush Guides and his channel. Tons of free assets, tons of paid assets. He's like the brush master. But um, these are some of his Geiger Pack brushes, and I can't recommend them uh, enough. They're so awesome. I use them to get some of this detail. Not all of it, but the spine, for instance. So, anyways, back to what I was saying. Uh, say I want the spine to go out instead of in and then, you know, kind of gradually fade in or something. I can do that very easily now. Instead of having to, you know, smooth, like it's not that with smooth stronger, sure, it's not that hard. But if you're just using a regular smooth, like it's going to keep some of those secondary forms in there. And maybe you want that in that case, just smooth. But I just like to have the more, tar more target there. So this saves me a lot of time because it's just a macro that I run really quickly. Uh, rather than you know setting up a layer and doing that every time because maybe i want to maybe i want to take this even up another level like maybe i sculpt some more detail on this and uh and this is another geiger brush guys the uh and it comes in that pack and it's kind of like a really strong damn standard but say i add some real you know deep creases in here and i'm like eh, maybe maybe i want some more resolution so i can get some high frequency uh, stuff in here like you know s some bumps and things like that let's turn color off uh, or just some more stuff like this and maybe I want a little bit more resolution well 
That morph target is still under here, okay? But if I subdivide again, it's now I'm at 13 million. That sub that morph target, it will still work at the uh, lowest level here, or the lower level, and all the uh, levels below that. But you know, if you, it's not going to work at the highest level, and that's not good because, you know, say I just m morph everything out there and then I go back up, you're going to have traces of the detail appearing there as you can see so with that said uh you know you can go up as many times as you want you can start this whenever you want the macro now i'm going to run through the macro okay how to how to do this how to set this up just in case you want to make one yourself that maybe doesn't have the first step in it because maybe you're working this uses layers and then it bakes the layers and gets rid of them uh so you don't have to worry about any of that it just it assumes that you already have a clean morph target stored, okay? So when you run this, you want you want to have either well, you just want to have a morph target stored. It's assuming that you have a morph target stored, you know, and the mesh is in a different state than the morph target is and it will subdivide up and allow you to keep the other state of the mesh. So, here's what you do. You uh First of all, you want to come up here to macro, and then you're going to hit new macro. It's going to ask you if you want to initialize ZBrush. Just hit no. Um, but be aware. The reason it's at, well, one of the reasons that it's asking this is because if you, uh, like if I were, I'm going to hit no. But if I were to pull my hot menu up uh, and make the macro using some of these buttons, it's not going to know. Like if I give someone the macro, if I share it with them, it's not, maybe they don't have the same custom menu as me. It's not going to know what to press. You know, it's not going to know what buttons I hit and stuff. So for purposes, I'm uh, like that because I do want to share it with the macro with you guys. And just in case it doesn't work, I want to run through it. But here we go. So I'm going to end this uh, and just hit cancel. That, that'll cancel it out. Okay. So now I'm going to run through what you actually need to do to make this look and let me back up so I'm not at 13 million okay so let's go back down to before I did anything and I okay hold on let's see okay right here is good no hold on let me go to 800,000 okay there we go okay no layers all right but you see I do have a morph target stored so <clears throat> what you want to do is you want to come to new macro if it asks you you want to initialize no you can if you want i mean that's just going to put everything back to default in this case i'm going to hit no and uh okay i'm going to so what we're doing is we're going to create a layer and i'm doing I, i'm not going to touch the camera right now because it'll record that in the macro if i do and it, it'll try to move it around so we're going to new layer <clears throat> okay and now we're going to come down here to morph target and hit switch that's basically the same thing as running a morph target brush over the whole thing okay and now we're going to stop recording that layer and now we want to turn the layer off but while i was making this macro i learned that the visibility toggle does not work for a macro. So instead of turning it off, I'm just going to crank the layer to zero. Whoops. Uh, ideally, you do that in one step, not two. So that's going to add another undo step. But for demonstration purposes, I don't care. Zero is the same thing as turning it off, and it will record that. So now, uh, let's see. Okay, so I switched the morph target, cranked the layer to zero, and now, uh, let's see. What you want to do is delete your current morph target, okay? Because your layer has it in here, guys. So now, you, and you can do that part after this next part or before. It doesn't matter. Now, what you want to do is you want to subdivide while the layer is at zero. Because if you have multiple, the reason I say that is if you have multiple layers, 
subdividing with any layer visible does not give it this the subdivide smooth on all the layers if you have all your layers off and you subdivide up it applies it to all of them so i'm going to subdivide up and now we're going to you'll notice that this says sub uh, untitled layer subdiv4 well that'll update just at some point it will say subdiv5 because we have five subdivs now so i and I actually messed up just now, guys. I hit Control D to subdivide. You don't want to do that when you're making the macro. You actually probably want to click the button here. Uh, you know, just in case you want to share it. So just be aware of that. So now we're going to crank the layer back to one in this new subdivision. And you'll see this is very smooth. And, uh, oh, yeah, I don't want to use my hot menu. I'm, I'm so used to using it. Okay, so now we're going to hit Store Morph Target. Crank the layer back to where we have all our detail, which is zero. Okay, and then Bake All. Now, we're going to hit End Macro. And it's going to ask if you want to save it. You do. Um, so you can just name this. So you want to put this in your... Uh, ZBrush folder guys under Z startup and macros you'll have some You'll have probably miscellaneous in here So you could make a folder called custom and these are my custom macros So just for testing purposes, I'm going to I already have this one made but I'm gonna say demonstration macro subdiv And that's a little bit long of a name. I'm let's I'll show you what happens. Yeah, actually, I'll just tell you. Demonstration macro. Okay, and then it's going to ask you if you want to uh, store material index as a separate channel. I don't really know what this means, but I just always hit no, to be honest with you guys. Okay, so now if you come to your macro tab and look, at, at first it might look like this, guys. If you have uh, only, you know, the the regular default macros so i'm gonna go under custom you can hold shift and open them all if you want so these are the custom macros i have and you'll see demonstration macro right here so first let's let's make sure i've got my morph target still yep nice and smooth so say we want to go up to like 13 million or whatever it is the next subdivision level is and keep this let, let's let's make sure this is working uh let's just click demonstration macro you see it's going to run through that and we're at 13 million and we have a morph target a clean morph target so that's it guys for this one i don't want to go on too long about it i just wanted to share this because it saves the hassle of having to think about this because it's not I, I get a little bit confused every time i do it honestly because there's a lot of back and forth the layer but um yeah i hope this is helpful to you all it's just a quick way to keep uh two states of a model i mean your morph target doesn't have to be a clean morph target it could be separate detail that you want to blend in here or something so yeah that's all for this one and i hope this helps uh any questions leave them in the comments i'll be glad to answer it or make a video on it uh you know if it if the question calls for a video i will absolutely do that next time see you next time